let's get it that's right you see the right What's happening people? This is CJ Lloyd Webley, AKA CJ Wrights. Please excuse the roughness. I can't wait to go back and get a trim, which I have not been able to do for the past couple of weeks. In fact, you know what? I, I actually quite like this rural look. I like the rugged look, but I don't know if my wife in particular would feel the same. So I have a conversation with her and see if she's feeling the rugged look. Are you feeling the rugged look? <laughs> Hit the comments, let me know what you think. Is it more of a writer appearance? Yeah, let's see. I am currently away on a writing retreat down south, uh, which is why you're probably looking in the background thinking it's one of those Zoom virtual backgrounds that people love to use. <laughs> but yeah, I'm actually away. I was fostered for an award from offwestend.com and I essentially said to them, look, I've been asked to write this play which I pitched to them and a couple of deadlines had passed and I was finding it really difficult to get into the right headspace to write this play because this play that I'm trying to write is, is going to be quite different to the other plays that I've written. Not necessarily in terms of the themes being explored because I very much like themes about family and some form of business or some form of enterprise that is the glue for the family. That's a common theme that runs throughout my plays but this play structurally it's very difficult for me because I need to think about it in quite a linear fashion first of all and then think about how I'm going to play around with the structure so with all the other things I've got going on my businesses and the work I do within the theatre in Birmingham it's been a challenge trying to get to this story off the ground. I've gone in so many different directions. I've been like, ah, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And then I was saying to the ladies who run this award, I could, you know, I'd really benefit with just having some time, really, some time to think about this story. And so they, they sent an email around to some of their friends that, that are supporters of the award. And they asked if I would be interested in coming down south to, I'm actually in the Suffolk area. If I'd be interested in having a week to try and get this script off the ground so of course I was like yes I would love that that would be amazing I think it would be amazing I've never been on a writing retreat like this before I've always just all my plays I've just been writing in my bedroom just around other stuff that I've, I've had to do so this is the first time I think really where I've actually had the time and space to think just about the story that I want to write and that comes with different pressures but it's been an amazing experience nonetheless. So it's really important to create a good working environment. Everybody has a different way of working and I've mentioned it before that I'm, I'm always thinking about different ideas so even when I'm writing this I'm thinking of other players that I want to write but a new environment encourages you to think about potential narratives and, and things that you wouldn't ordinarily think of. But I think that comes with its own challenges. When I got here, it is quite a big environment. It's a four bed cottage. And that was a real challenge because I didn't necessarily want to work from the bedroom because I just felt like if I start writing and get a little bit tired, I'll just end up taking a nap and then I've wasted an hour or, or two hours just sleeping. So I had to get myself out of the bedroom environment I went downstairs, I, t I tried to work in the living room a few times. But one thing that was really important was that I, I just left my phone in another space. I just had to make sure my phone wasn't with me because as soon as my phone was with me, I was just getting really distracted. Because there's just so much out there. I run five, six different social media channels and I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere and I'm trying to piece everything together. So it was important for me to leave those social media distractions for the best part. I'm really trying to knuckle down on this story. The environment that you create within the environment that you're in is also very important. Whether it's being at home and you know that, okay, I work best in the living room. For me, what works well is just setting a lot of goals for yourself and also just making sure you have that space in your own environment. In this environment, I was using the different rooms and then I came to the realisation that okay the living room is not really working for me, I'm slouching down in the chair, I'm not comfortable, I'll use that space as a, as a relaxation point if I need a break, if I want to have a, a cup of tea or an orange juice I'll go in there but I decided that lounge space, I guess you call it a lounge or a dining space maybe, this space that I'm in at present 
I just felt like it was very open, it was very bright, the sun was coming in the morning and I could just come downstairs and get the writing done. This is the process that I go through. I know I usually write my scene breakdowns on a blank piece of paper. My refill leads. I also have a pen just in case a pencil has broken. I got some rhubarb custards, which are essentials, just in case I need something to keep me going, keep some energy going. Because I think any gummy type sweets, they're just gonna go. But rhubarb custards, they're not that nice. So you're not gonna get too carried away. And then this is how I, this is pretty much how I hash out my scripts. And half of this stuff probably doesn't end up going in my script, but there'll probably be a few gems in here that I do keep. But this is all about really trying to think about character voice. And then once I've done that, I will go onto my laptop and I use a program called Writer Duet, which I'll put a link to in the bio below. That I use to type up all my plays and scripts. So definitely for future writing retreats, I'll know that I'm going to establish where it is that I want to do the, the bulk of my writing and I'm going to find that space and I'm just going to stay there for as long as I feel I need to. And I think that's the great thing about writing retreats. It's on your terms. It's, it's not like a holiday where you're away relaxing, like you're here to do work, but at the same time, everything is on your terms. So if you want to set yourself a, a goal of say, okay, I want to write five pages or I want to develop you know, this character within this time, I want to think about where they're from, what their voice is, what the challenges are in this piece, what they're trying to do, what they want, what they need. I can spend time just focusing on that one character for that afternoon, but you could equally decide I'm going to write five pages this afternoon or I'm going to think about what this whole set looks like. So there's so many different things you can do. And when you're on a writing retreat, you have the, the space to think and that's why I think it's so important to even if you are in your own environment to, to find that space that that allows you to to just break away from normality a little bit because when you are writing a play you are entering into a different world that's actually really helped me with this particular piece because it is so different I have come away and that's really helped me to generate new ideas for this story that I know otherwise I would not have had if I'd have stayed put and not gone on this journey. Since I've been here, it's been like nothing I've experienced before. There's two amazing people that I'm staying with and they've been so kind and generous. They've made food for me in the evenings. So I know I could knuckle down on my work and even if I don't eat throughout the day, which thankfully I went shopping beforehand. My wife helped me pick out some great food, salad, fruit, whatever. I've just been pretty much eating fruit throughout the day. And then when it came to the evening, this lovely couple had food for me already. So that was something I was really thankful for. And not something that I was expecting when I got here. I was expecting to have to, to fend for myself pretty much. So that's been great. They invited me to a, a party with famous actors. And if you got me on Instagram, you would have seen a little bit of it. But famous, quite famous actors, successful people. And I'm coming, I didn't actually bring any clothes like a shirt or any jeans or anything like that because I was just pretty much thinking I was gonna just stay in the cottage all week really and not leave and see the area. But they said, uh, there's this party, you should come with us. It's a great networking opportunity. And I was, I was saying, yeah, I don't shy away from those things because at the end of the day, you never know what could come from it. But I think with networking experiences, it's about being authentically you. Sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but entering into unfamiliar environments can almost make you feel like what you have is not worth bringing to the table. But I think my experience in London helped me to overcome that sense of imposter syndrome. So now when I go into, step into environments, I just think I have a lot to offer. I can speak with people from all walks of life. I've worked with people from all walks of life. So I don't shy away from these experiences. But again, having said, it can be something that you have to get used to. So you're speaking to people who are, who are quite successful, they're actors, barristers, lawyers they're at this party this amazing house i got there and i was parked up next to a royce and i thought that's all right isn't it <laughs> the people you're around can almost elevate you to a certain extent so i went there I th people asked me what i do and then people started taking pictures with me because they were like oh playwright 
I should probably know you. I'm going to take a picture of you. So I went there as a playwright because that's what I do primarily, venturing into other areas of writing as I'll, as I'll talk about. But they, they started Googling me. A lot of stuff comes up. I'm quite visible on Google. So they were like, oh, it's, you know, let's get a picture. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. If you want a picture of me, that's fine. But that was because I was authentic about who I am. I'm, I'm a writer. I've come here. I've been invited to come here by the award that I was fostered for and that's why I'm here. I'm not just walking the streets and just thought, oh, that looks like a nice party. I was invited. <laughs> I found that experience really useful and I think the more I get into those types of environments, the more I continue to work and build my profile, the easier it will get. It's something that I think is very important, particularly in an industry like this. It's about being personable. When I moved to London, I literally made a list of all the London theatres and basically just turned up on the doorstep and said, hi, I'm from Birmingham, I'm a writer, I'm trying to pursue a career in this. Is there anyone here that, that would be willing to talk to me? And from doing that, I built lots of useful connections and, and lots of people who could help me hone my craft. So you have to think outside of the box a lot of the time. These things aren't necessarily hard to do. It's not a hard thing to create a list of theatres and, and go and turn up on the doorstep and say, I'm a writer, but it's actually the doing it is where that fear comes in. And it's about overcoming that fear and thinking, this is something that's going to benefit me long term. If Let's say I go to 20 theatres and only five get back to me. That's five more connections than I would have had prior, or that's five more experiences. And you start to get a sense of the environment that, that you're going to and would like to work with. So that's a little bit about the importance of networking. From going to this party, from speaking to some people, I, there was actually a theatre producer there and the lady that I'm, that I'm with, she said, oh, um, I'd like to introduce you to this person. She's actually running a theatre. She's producing a project in, in Coventry. She's producing a project in London. And then I got talking to her and theatre industry is, is quite small. I didn't actually realise how small it was really because I, I mentioned like six or seven names and she was like, oh yeah, I know those. And she was saying to me, you've got some really good connections there. Just continue the dialogue with them. Just continue sending them work and just continue doing what you're doing. So I got her card, I got her number. She said, anything you need, if you need me to look over any contracts, if you need me to you know, help you with, with a literary agent or anything like that, just let me know. And so I thought, yeah, that's amazing. And had I not gone to that party, had I just thought, you know what, I'm here to write. I don't really want to do any of that, which my primary focus of being here was to write. I didn't necessarily want to do much else but write whilst I was here. But I thought, well, what's an hour out of a whole week I might as well just go and, and get the experience. The expectations of being here versus the reality of being here in some sense they align but also in another sense they misalign. I would say my expectations before I got here were very much that okay I want to get this whole play written I'm going to just knuckle down and get this whole play written but the reality is and I think it's something I'll definitely know for next time. Writing a play doesn't work like that. You, there's so many different things you have to think about. And, and I usually start off with dialogue. I usually start off with my characters and, a, and then think about the environment as well that they're going to be in. But there's so much that goes into a play. And I think because this is, this is such a different style of play that I'm used to writing, I think I overlooked the amount of work that would be required to, to finish the play within this whole week. It was just not realistic because I could sit there all day with the paper in front of me because I, I write all my plays by hand. I could try and just hash it out. But I'd, one, I'd just be writing waffle because there's just, I would be putting too much pressure on myself to, to get this thing done because I'd... That was the expectation I had. I was going to come here, I'm in a nice open space, I'm going to have a nice cup of tea next to me and I'm just going to write for 24 hours. It's just not realistic. I thought that was what I was going to be able to do, but it turned out that I probably worked about six or seven hours on the play during the day and then I would open up my laptop and catch up on some other stuff and then if I felt like it I'd, I'd go for a jog or go for a walk and then I'd come back and, and probably try and think about some other areas of the script that might need a bit of work or might need looking at or thinking about. So I didn't really have a rigid structure or routine. I think some people work really well like that. They could literally say, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to write 
and I'm not gonna leave this room until this is done. I think, for me, that takes the enjoyment out of it. I really wanna enjoy the process of writing this play, and I felt like if I was putting too much pressure on myself in that regard, it would have taken the enjoyment away from this whole experience and, and this privilege of being here, really. I did try to do that on the first day. I tried to just sit down and just get this play written, try to do like 10, 15 pages a day, and I just felt like, my mind just wasn't in the right place to, to be doing that. Needed a bit of time to think, go for a walk out in nature, talk to myself about what this character's going to do, what the journey is, why are they there? That's the most important thing. Why are they here and what do they want? That was the thing that was really, really challenging with this piece. And I'll talk more about it once I've written it, but sitting there in front of the paper and not going outside and getting some fresh air was just not going to work. So. I really learn, and I'll know for the next writing retreats that I go on, I'll probably be back here in a few months to, to do a reading of the first draft. But yeah, I just knew that the expectation that I had of coming and trying to just write this play within a whole week was just not realistic. The reality was I was actually more focused and more productive when I stepped outside of my expectations, so when I went for a little run, I'd think, oh, there's an idea. Or when I had a conversation with someone, there was a really interesting time, I'd, I went for dinner one evening. And it's really important, I feel, to, to share your ideas with trusted people who are gonna give you some sound feedback. And you can always gauge whether a story is interesting based on people's responses, because I think a lot of the time we're writing, or I tried to at least write universal themes that, that a lot of people would resonate with. When I was talking about this story, I, uh, I realised that, that something wasn't quite working and they were looking at me like, oh, that, that sounds interesting themes, but what's the story? Because people don't necessarily want to hear about the themes, they want to hear about the characters and the journey that they go on and what they've had to overcome and what happens at the end. That's what people are really interested in. The themes you can interweave into that, but what had happened was I had this really strong theme that I wanted to write about, but I was actually writing the story through a particular character's lens. So it was their story. They were telling the story of what they were having to overcome. But then after having this conversation, I went to bed and then I woke up the next morning and I realized, hold on, it's not actually that person's story. It's this person's story. And then the next day, when I went and had dinner, I told them their conversation had really helped me. And then I told them whose story it was and what happened. And then they were like, oh, that makes complete sense. That sounds amazing. I want to hear more about it. So having conversations really helped me. And that was not something I was expecting beforehand. I was expecting to come, be in my thoughts, get this play written. And I could have sat in here the whole week and just written this play. But I don't think it would have been any good because I hadn't hadn't opened up the dialogue, I hadn't opened up my way of thinking by going and exploring the surrounding area and having conversations with people that want to know about the story. So that's very much my process. I know some people can literally lock themselves away and just get it written. But for me, I've found and, I, and I've really enjoyed the, the experience of being here and learning. I know I'll be doing much more of this type of thing for future plays and screenplays that I do write but the expectations and the reality were very different in, in certain aspects. I did expect to be productive. I did expect to understand my story more after having this week, which has definitely happened. I understand what I'm trying to write now. And I would say the reality of that was very much about devoting that time to writing. It sounds a bit cliche, but this week has really given me the time to focus, re-energize, recalibrate on the things that I really want to achieve. And that might be through this specific play and also different areas of my life. I've had that time to think. And so I really believe it is important to take a working holiday, not just a holiday where you're going to relax, but a working holiday where you can actually think about your goals, aspirations, what you want to achieve that year, the year after, and within 10, 20 years, what do you want out of your life? A working holiday really helps me to figure that out. And it's something that I'm really excited to do again in the future.
So the three main things I've learned are, one, don't be too hard on yourself when you are trying to write a play. Just get the story in your mind somewhat. You don't have to have everything hashed out. Just think about what you want to write and what journey these characters are going to go on. Number two, explore the environment you're in. If you're on a working holiday, go for a walk, go for a jog. Make sure that you are getting that peace of mind at some stage. And then number three is bring more pencils because I usually use my refill LEDs. I usually use my refill LEDs that I got from Amazon, but I, I got through like four or five of them. And yeah, so next time I'm just gonna bring a, probably just a normal pencil and sharpen it, or I will bring two, three packs of these. These are really good for being in a rehearsal room when you're writing notes on your script, but yeah, it didn't really work out too well for this particular retreat, so that's something to consider for next time. I always find that writing with pencil is a lot easier. I can just scribble things a bit easier. But that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please drop a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. There's gonna be a lot more videos coming soon and I'm excited to continue to share my journey with you all. Peace and love for now. Take care.